Radha Srivasa. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> so we are going to continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 2, Text 60. We are going to begin today. Does anyone remember what yesterday Yamraj, what we read, what was Yamraj saying, what happened? Hare Krishna. Yamraj ji ne kaha ki jisko atma shakshakta ho gaya hai, gyan praap ho chuka hai. तो वो उसे पता है कि ये शरीर नश्वर है आत्मा सनातन है और जो मोह में ग्रस्त है उनको ये ज्ञान नहीं होता है तभी वो मोह ग्रस्त होकर इस संसार में चलते हैं जैसे कि वो आ, आ, एक आ, आ, शिकारी जो शिकारी होता है वो पक्षियों के सामने दाना डालकर डालकर उनको लालच देता है तो वो उसके जाल में फंस जाते हैं तो ये बताया है कि ये भी साक्षात मृत्यु के लिए पक्षियां तैयार हो जाते हैं वो दाने के लालच में उनको मृत्यु प्राप्त होती है तो उन्होंने बताया कि सुयज्ञ की रानिया जो है तो वो बोलते हैं कुलिंग पक्षी अपनी पत्नी को विधा के तक के चंगल से बचाने की बहुत कोशिश करता है लेकिन वो नहीं मानती वो उसके जाल में फंस जाती है और वो अपने मृत्यु को प्राप्त होने लगती है तो वो बोलते हैं क्या ये विधाता इतना क्रूर है कि वो सोचता है कि भाई मेरी पत्नी को उसने अपने जाल में फंसा के ये करा है तो वो विलाप करता है बहुत भला विधाता इस बेचारी पक्षी को छीन कर इस क्या पाएगा उसको क्या लाभ होगा ऐसे हम सोचते हैं तो और वो वह इसका दोष विधाता पर ही डालता है कि उसने मेरी अर्धांगनी को मेरी पत्नी को मेरे से क्यों छीन लिया तो मेरा आधा शरीर है मेरा वो आधा शरीर चल गया तो वो उसका बहुत दुख मनाता है तो <coughs> तो वो सोचता है कि मेरे तो वो पक्षी ने दाना खा के और, और मौत के मुंह में चले गया तो अब उसकी संता ने तो माता के विहीन हो गई और वो तो पूरा समय माता के लिए प्रतीक्षा करती है कब मेरी माँ कुछ लेकर आएगी और मुझे खिलाएगी क्योंकि वो पक्षी बेचारे वे पंखहीन है वो उड़ नहीं सकते कहीं जा नहीं सकते तो भगवान करते हैं कि नहीं पूर्ण पुरुषोत्तम भगवान तो सबकी रक्षा करता है चाहे कोई पिता विहीन हो चाहे कोई माता विहीन हो बस ये है कि हमको ईश्वर की इच्छा का पालन करना है और फिर उन्होंने दूसरा उदाहरण दिया कि एक रोगी है उसको वो भी उसको यदि कितनी भी महंगी दवाइयां दो कितना भी अच्छा डॉक्टर हो सब कुछ होने के बाद भी वो मर जाता है तो क्यों तो इस कारण भगवान की सुरक्षा के बीच बिना कोई जीवित नहीं रह सकता चाहे उसको कितना भी अच्छा डॉक्टर मिले कितनी भी अच्छी अः मिले तो उन्होंने बताया कि इंक्यूबेटर में कैसे कोई अंडा है वो अंडा विकसित नहीं होता है तो वो उसमें से जीव पैदा नहीं हो सकता है तो इसी प्रकार वो इंक्यूबेटर की बात करते हैं कि अंडे को उसमें रखेंगे तो वो सिर्फ जीव पैदा होगा तो ये है ना सैद्धांतिक ज्ञान है व्यवहारिक परिणाम नहीं है उसके हमको किसी भी तरह से भगवान की शरण में जाना है अंडा भी वो बनाएगा जीव भी वो बनाएगा सब कुछ भगवान भी बनाता है ये हमारा व्यवहारिक ज्ञान हमको ये होना चाहिए कि बिना प्रभु के बिना परमात्मा के कोई भी कार्य पूर्ण हो जा नहीं सकता चाहे कैसी भी हमें सहूलियत हो कोई भी तो इस प्रकार छोटे बालक के वेश में यजमान जी ने रानियों को ये सब ज्ञान दिया थैंक यू थैंक यू आंटी वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू एंड देन देर वाज अ क्वेश्चन की इन कलयुग how can we understand this knowledge because it's not easy to understand this knowledge that 
Yamraj is saying. How can we realize that we are not the body, we are the soul? So then yeah. we have been given the easy process uh, in this age of Kali. And what is mm. that process? Self-realization. Yeah, and so how do we chanting, do self-realization? Yeah, chanting, hearing chanting. and chanting. Yeah, hearing That's and right. chanting. By chanting. Yeah, by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, we can get self-realized. Mm. That's the process given to us in this age of Kali. So then going on, text 60. Atta Sochata Mayuyam. Atta Sochata Mayuyam. Mayuyam. Param Chatmanam Evava. Param Chatmanam Evam Ya. Atma ka parovatra. Taha atma ka parovatra. Sviya parakya eva va. Atra sviya parakya eva va. Swa parabhine ve shena. Swaha pari parabhine ve shena. Vigyane na dehinam. Vigyane na dehinam. Okay, translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. Therefore, none of you should be aggrieved for the loss of the body, whether your own or those of others. Only in ignorance does one make bodily distinctions, thinking, who am I? Who are the others? What is mine? What is for others? So Hiranya Kashipu is telling this to the nephews because he told them the story of Yamraj. So then now he's, after he's told them the story, he's saying that you shouldn't lament because see, this is what Yamraj himself is saying, that it's all controlled by the Supreme Lord. And anyway, our time in this body is so temporary and we are not the body. In this material world, the conception of self-preservation is the first law of nature. According to this conception, one should be interested in his personal safety and should then consider society, friendship, love, nationality, community, and so on, which have all developed because of the bodily conception of life and a lack of knowledge of the spirit soul. I'm sorry. So, you know, when we are in the aeroplane also, the advice, okay, you first, if there is an emergency, the oxygen mask will drop. And then they say, first you put the mask for yourself. And then if you're able to help, I'm sorry, help another, you help another. Yeah, so that is the material law in this, in this, in this material world that survival you know that first we save ourselves then only we can save another person and then Prabhupada is saying why is it there because we are not able to understand that we are not the body so this is called agyan as long as human societies in darkness and ignorance men will continue to make huge arrangements in the bodily conception of life so There's so much we can see, uh, every, the spending of every country, the budget that is set aside for defense, you know, for weapons is huge, huge. So all this is because we are not able to understand that we each are spirit souls. This is described by Prahlad Maharaj as Bharam. In the materialistic conception, modern civilization makes enormous arrangements for huge roads, houses, mills, and factories. And this is a man's conception of the advancement of civilization. People do not know, however, that at any time, they themselves may be kicked out of the scene and forced to accept bodies that have nothing to do with these enormous houses, palaces, roads, and automobiles. It's true, no? We say some. Wherever we see there is a lot of infrastructure put in, there's nice roads are there, there's big skyscrapers, uh, nice organization. Then we say, that, oh, this place is very advanced. 
and then people want to stay in such a place but then we don't realize that you know our time in that place is also temporary sure it's convenient it's convenient to live in such places where there is infrastructure put on so the the idea is that we should not get too carried away by it use it as as it is take it for as it is that it's is for convenience but not identify ourselves with it. Because it's there with us for a short time and then soon we will have to give it all up. Therefore, when Arjuna was thinking in terms of his bodily relationships with his kinsmen, Krishna immediately chastised him, saying, Kutasva kashmalam idam vishame samupasthitam anarya justam. This bodily conception of life is befitting the Anaryas, the non-Aryans, who are not advanced in knowledge. An Aryan civilization is a civilization advanced in spiritual knowledge. So actually to be advanced, the Aryans are the ones who are actually advanced. Why? Because they understand the knowledge of the body and the knowledge of the soul. Not merely by stamping oneself an Aryan does one become an Aryan. To keep oneself in the deepest darkness concerning spiritual knowledge and at the same time claim to be an Aryan is a non-Aryan position. Like Krishna was telling Arjuna, ah, why are you speaking like the non-Aryans? You don't understand that we are not the body, we are the soul? How come you're speaking like this? Krishna is telling to Arjuna. So one may say, oh well, I am an Aryan. But then, to be an Aryan means to actually understand the knowledge, the difference between the body and the soul. It's not based on birth, but based on this knowledge. In this connection, Srila Madhvacharya quotes as follows from the Brahma Vaivarta Purad, Ka atma ka para iti dehadi apekshaya, na hi dehadi atma sya, na cha shatru udirita. Ato dehika vridha va shaiva kim prayojanam Yastu deha gato jiva sahi nasham nagachati tata shatru vibridha cha swanashe shochanam kutta dehadi vyati rikta tu jive sho prati janata ta ata atma vibridha stu vasu deve rati stira Shatru nashas tatha gyana nasho nanya katha kathanchana. The purpose is that as long as we are in this human form of body, our duty is to understand the soul within the body. So it's our duty, this thing, not something that we can ignore. The body is not the self, we are different from the body. And therefore, there is no question of friends, enemies, or responsibilities in terms of the bodily conception of life. One should not be very anxious about the bodies changing from childhood to boyhood, from boyhood to old age, and then to apparent annihilation. Rather, one should be very seriously concerned about the soul within the body and how to release the soul from the material clutches. So we are always very anxious about the body you know, we get too consumed by it. We are not able to understand, I'm not the body, I'm the soul. Whereas this human life is given to us, this human body is given to us to understand the same knowledge. So the way we will be able to understand the knowledge is the more we chant Hare Krishna. The more we chant, the more we will be able to understand this knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the living entity within the body is never annihilated. Therefore, one should surely know that whether one has many friends or many enemies, his friends cannot help him and his enemies cannot do him any harm. One should know that he is a spirit soul, aham brahmasmi, and that the constitutional position of the soul is unaffected by the changes of the body. So we get worried, oh my God, I'm getting old, I'm getting old, I have wrinkles, I have gray hair. But actually, we are not the body. No, we are thinking we are the body. We are the soul. We are eternal. Soul never gets old. We are eternal. 
in all circumstances, everyone as a spirit soul must be a devotee of Lord Vishnu and should not be concerned with bodily relationships, whether with friends or with enemies. So every soul is a devotee. It's just we have forgotten. A devotee of who? Of Lord Vishnu. Because we are part and parcel of Krishna. So each and every one of us, that's our constitutional position. One should know that neither we ourselves nor our enemies in the bodily conception of life are ever killed. So we, because we are thinking we are the body, we say, oh, this is my friend and this is my enemy. That's because we are thinking we are the body. Prahlad Maharaj also says that we need to rise above this, thinking about friends and enemies. But the, 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 the reason we think is because we think we are the body. Anyone who's connected with the body we feel is mine, you know. And we think the friends will help us, the enemies will harm us. But our true friend is Krishna. Nobody can help us at the time of death. No matter how good the friend is, at the time of death, Krishna can help us. And the true friend is the devotee who can help us remember Krishna at the time of death. So Krishna is our best friend. We have no real enemies as such because we are all spirit souls, you know. We are here in this material world for a short time. But it's our mind which makes us think, oh, this is my friend and this is my enemy. So चितम अधारय Sri Narad Muni continued, Diti, the mother of Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha, heard the instructions of Hiranyakashipu, along with her daughter-in-law, Rushabhanu, Hiranyaksha's wife. She then forgot her grief over her son's death and thus engaged her mind and attention in understanding the real philosophy of life. So this is, we are hearing that Yudhishthir Maharaj was asking to Narad Muni, you know, that when he saw Shishupala entering the body of Krishna. So he had put this question and then Narad Muni told him, Aoi Ranyaksha, uh, that Hiranyaksha was killed and Hiranyakashipu is giving this knowledge. So when a relative dies, one certainly becomes very much interested in philosophy. But when the funeral ceremony is over, one again becomes attentive to materialism. Even Daityas, who are materialistic persons, sometimes think of philosophy when some relative meets death. The technical term for this attitude of the materialistic person is Samshan Vairagya. Shamshan Vairagya, or detachment in a cemetery or a place of cremation. You know, when somebody has just died, when we, uh, when we the family uh, is more receptive to understand the philosophy of the soul. But then, soon after, everyone forgets. It surely pacifies one. But then after that, everyone goes back to normal, thinking, okay, I'm never going to die. So that that is called Shamshan Vairagya, that we get detachment at the funeral place or, you know, where the, where the, what do you say, condolence or where this condolence meeting is happening. Then after that, we forget it. 
as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, four classes of men receive an understanding of spiritual life and God. Artha, the distressed, Jigyasu, the inquisitive, Artharthi, one who desires material gains, and Jnani, who is searching for knowledge. Especially when one is very much distressed by material conditions, one becomes interested in God. So it's true, no? You know, when there is a lot of suffering, one may come to God. Or when one is inquisitive to understand, then one comes. When one wants to understand philosophy, when one has knowledge, one who is searching for knowledge comes to Krishna. Or one who has wealth comes to Krishna. Therefore, Kunti Devi said in her prayers to Krishna that she preferred distress to a happy mood in life. In the material world, one who is happy forgets Krishna or God. But sometimes, if one is actually pious but in distress, he remembers Krishna. Queen Kunti Devi therefore preferred distress because it is an opportunity for remembering Krishna. When Krishna was leaving Kunti Devi for his own country, Kunti Devi regretfully said that she was better off in distress because Krishna was always present. Whereas now that the Pandavas were situated in their kingdom, Krishna was going away. For a devotee, distress is an opportunity to remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead constantly. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 7th canto, 2nd chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Hiranyakashipu, King of the Demons. So Prabhupada here is saying, how Kunti Devi, she was saying, now Krishna, now that we won the kingdom, now you're going, leaving us. So it's better off we were suffering. Whenever we had suffering, you are always there to help us. We were in the forest, we were exiled. You have always helped us when we were suffering. You're always with us. And now that we are going to be comfortable, you're leaving us. Then rather let us suffer because then at least you will be with us then. So that is the mood of the devotee. He wants to always be with Krishna. So anyway, this brings us an end to this chapter. Uh, that Diti forgot her lamentation. She heard the knowledge from Hiranyaksha, uh, Hiranyakashipu, and she's gotten pacified now. Um, questions, comments? Mm. Hare Krishna. Uh, like, uh, uh, it is true, like everything is uh, happening or happened is. Uh, uh, just because of Krishna mercy or Krishna uh, like uh, 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 thought we can say like what he planned but uh, sometimes uh, it is difficult to understand like uh, uh, not only for distress but sometimes if you are unexpected happiness also is mean like when we are very happy we say like oh it's just because of God say thank you to God. But when we are in di distress, we also say like, why, why God, you are doing these all things for us. We are already in so many problems. We are facing so many things. And again, this is happened. So we also said to the uh, Lord, like maybe accused. We That time we just say like accused, like why you has given these all distress or punishment to us. Even when we happy at that time also we say like oh thank you God you have chosen us to for this happiness. Uh, so this is true, but sometimes like the situation came into our lives and we think like oh there is no God, no like uh, everything messed. Uh, in that yuga, it was okay, like uh, Hiranyakashipu uh, gave explanation about lamentation and uh, have given example of the uh, bird and uh, the Bobby baby, sorry, Bobby baby in, in incubator or even the doctor, like you are getting good medicine, but even it was, if it is plan of Krishna, you must have to left your body. Nobody can save you. But in the Kali Yuga, in Kali Yuga, like everything is changed. Everything. 
people are thinking like we are God. If they have money, they are just trying to expose their like personality. They are taking care. They are going to beauty parlor like women and then buying jewel jewelry. Nobody is thinking like this is material thing. Whatever we are earning, we must have to uh, either donate or either help some poor people. Nobody is thinking like that. And when they are when they are becoming very posh, they have just proud and uh, they don't want to talk to uh, their friends like Sudama, Krishna friends. Even he was so poor, but Krishna just hugged him and uh, without letting anything know, he given everything to him. But now that's everything is changed. Even the your friends, very close friend, in, maybe in the past, and now every situation is changed and he or she become very good in economic condition. But that friend is not going to talk to you in next stage when there was there is some difference with your material life and his material life. So even hearing and chanting is the medicine for this Kali Yuga. But uh, it's my personal experience. That's why I'm saying. But uh, the people who, who are uh, like getting richer and richer, they are getting more prouder and prouder and neglecting the people in their surroundings. So, and how to teach that type of, like you cannot teach that type of people because they are just blind with, your, with their money. But somehow, like here, what is the question, my question? I'm just reaching to my question. Like here, is that person have some prarabd in their past life? That's why in this life he became so much uh, like rich. Or it is there some connection with God? Like how, how you are going to explain this situation? Yeah, of course. Of course, it's coming from past karma, right? How we have acted in the past, that's what then we will suffer or enjoy according to that. That's just law of nature. That is karma. Is that okay? okay? So, yeah, it's okay somehow. Because if you if I think philosophically, then it is some confuse confusion. Like in his story, we heard we read about the bird. The Kelang Kelangal bird, he, uh, her wife caught his wife caught by like hunter, and he was thinking like, oh, my wife caught by hunter. Now what will happen to my uh, small kids? How they will survive? Who will give them grains? They were they will wait for her mother for a long time. And he was thinking, and then hunter was watching him, and he also uh, killed him by his arrow. So here I can understand like there is some. Mm, uh, prarabd maybe in past life they have something like that this life they become bird and they have their death has death planned by Krishna like how they are going to be uh, get their uh, liberation yeah. like not okay yeah for this story the the moral that we have to understand from this story is that mm -hmm. we get so much into lamentation for another loss of somebody else not realizing that time is going to take us away also. So then we are so much of the time we go in lamentation instead of taking up hearing and chanting. And then we are also going to die and meet with the same fate. Instead of taking, making, taking the opportunity of this human life to actually get out of this cycle of birth and death. Yeah, so yeah, the bird that's... was lamenting and lamenting Instead of flying away and going and taking care of his children, he was sitting there and lamenting. So now the children have both, no father and no mother. That's true. But my my question was totally opposite. Like these all are about lamentation. Like why we don't uh, have to lament about somebody loss. That's I understand. But is just vice versa. Like when you are just completely full with joy, happiness, and everything is with you. And that time you are just uh, trying to show off, do show off. Like 
not uh, doing any kirtan any bhajan not chanting nothing but still you are in very good condition so how you can relate this like That's it's just opposite to love, lamentation no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So somebody has done some good karma in their past life and so now they're enjoying the result of their past life. But they are enjoying, right? They are not doing yeah. any any bhajan, any kirtan, any chanting, nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Then then so what's your question? Yeah, my question, like, what is going to be next? Like they are uh, so based on the karma. So now they are enjoying based on their past karma. And then now how they act, they are going to get in the future life, the karma based on that. It's action and reaction, right? Yeah, but, you, but we don't remember our past, our uh, future. Only we remember the present. And uh, Krishna knows, yeah, our all lives, he know our all prarabdh, our all future, everything he knew. But uh, we, as a human being, we are not have such type of uh, powers to remember our previous or future. We cannot. So we, we can. This philosophy that we are hearing is for us, for our own self. That what am I doing? I am here right now. Where do I want to be in the future? This philosophy is for us to apply in our own life. What am I supposed to do but with this philosophy? But who is understanding these all things, right? Like who have like self-realization, just we read. Self-realization. So, so we have to attempt to realize this knowledge ourself. We have to try to understand this knowledge for ourselves and apply this knowledge for ourselves. Because everyone has a free will. We cannot go around telling people what they should do and what they shouldn't do. We can't do that. That's a free will in people. But what we can do is we can try to change ourselves. Mm. Right? We can give this knowledge in the sense make this knowledge available to them so that they can make their choice. That's all we can do. We can make this, give them books, invite them for kirtan, invite them for lectures. So giving them an opportunity to hear the knowledge because many people don't even know. So then that comes again to the great need that there is to spread the Krishna consciousness movement in current times. And there is so much need to spread this knowledge, to spread the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. So that everyone, so because then we can know that somebody is going to be suffering later, so we can stop that suffering for, for people. We can help them to go back home, back to Godhead. There was, uh, Prabhupada was going down Oxford Street with some devotees. They were in the car. And so the devotees were thinking, oh, wow, it's so nice. These people, they are here in the best of this area, buying the best of the clothes, buying best of the brands, enjoying their life so much. Whereas Prabhupada was crying. His eyes, they were tearing up. You know, why was he tearing up? Why? They asked him, what happened, Prabhupada? Why are you crying? Prabhupada started crying more. What happened, Prabhupada? Why are you crying? Prabhupada said, they don't even know where they are going to go in the next life. So that is a compassion of a devotee. Because of Prabhupada's compassion, we are here. We are trying to understand this knowledge. We are trying to chant. So we need to be an instrument of that compassion. Is that okay? Hmm. Ah, uh, Shilpa, I have a question. Yes, tell me, auntie. Ah, but, uh, ah, but... 
ये तो बहुत अच्छा बताया है हिरण्य कश्यपु ने ज्ञान जो है उनका इतना अच्छा ज्ञान उनको था तो भी उन्होंने अपने पुत्र प्रहलाद के साथ ऐसा व्यवहार क्यों किया हम्म तो वही तो है अभी क्वेश्चन युधिष्ठिर ने पूछा नारद मुनि से कि क्या हुआ कि वो अपने पुत्र के साथ ऐसे कैसे कर रहा है तो इसीलिए अभी नारद मुनि ये कथा बता रहे हैं हमें तो अभी आगे चल के पता पड़ेगा अच्छा, क्या हुआ अच्छा, क्योंकि उससे क्योंकि हिरण्या कशिपु को विष्णु से बहुत वो हो गया एनिमिटी की विष्णु ने मेरे भाई को मारा ओके हम्म विष्णु ने मेरे भाई को मारा उसको बहुत उसको लगा कि अभी मेरे को विष्णु को मारना है और प्रहलाद तो विष्णु का भक्त है हाँ अच्छा 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 भाई की वजह से हाँ अच्छा थैंक यू मतलब वो बाकियों को समझा रहे थे बट स्टिल ही वाज इन द लाइक सेंस ऑफ रिवेंज राइट सो दिस इज व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस सो देखो इसीलिए तो हम बोल रहे हैं कि दूसरों को बोलना आसान है It's very Very easy to tell others. You tell do this, you yeah, don't do this. Yeah. What you're doing yeah. just now, as you were saying, Ratna. Oh, yes. It's easy to point to others. Do like this. Do like this. But we have to ah. apply the philosophy in our own life. Yes. Very hmm. true. Very true. That then it is going to make a difference. Otherwise, really? saying is very easy. It's very easy to speak, but it's ah, not yes. easy to follow. Yes. It's yes. very difficult yes. to follow. You know. Follow. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, because it's difficult to follow, we feel easier to tell others. Let me tell this one: "Hey, you're doing this wrong. Hey, you should do this. You should do that." Mm. Because why? Because we don't want to follow. Mm. Yes, very true. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense now. Yeah, like आप दूसरे को बताओगे ये करो वो करो वो करो but you are not doing the same thing. You are not exactly. applying the same thing upon you. Yeah. Yes. So we have to first apply the philosophy in our own life. Then teach, yeah, and try to see the change what we get inside, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. And maybe after that we will not going to hurt anymore, or we are not going to distressed or more happy. Like we will in saturation. Exactly. Something exactly. like that. Exactly. Yes. This yes, no, it's, yes. That's why it's called self realization. We don't have to realize anyone else. We have to But it is very realize, difficult. Right? Very difficult. Very difficult. Exactly, it is difficult. It's it's true. It is difficult. That's why we feel it's easier to tell others instead of applying ourselves. You know. Yes. Yes. So, but yeah. then Lord Chaitanya, He's given us this way. Lord Chaitanya mm -hmm. is saying, "You just chant, and you will be able to apply the philosophy." Mm -hmm. Lord yes. Chaitanya Singh, you chant Hare Krishna and you will be able to do it. That is the special mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you. आपने मेरे क्वेश्चन को ही पूछा, yeah. And then a story बताया, but you just asked in one sentence. It was, yeah, it's very true. हम अपने आप को नहीं देखते हैं जस्ट वी आर एक्सप्लेनिंग अदर्स टू अदर अदर टू अदर्स लाइक दैट या एक्सैक्टली या दैट्स व्हाट वी आर नॉट सीइंग आवर सेल्फ और व्हाट डू आई हैव टू इंप्रूव ऑन इंप्रूव या आई गोइंग रॉन्ग यस यस वेरी ट्रू या लेकिन ये बहुत मुश्किल है बहुत मुश्किल है बहुत बहुत क्योंकि हम It's इतना true. मतलब जकड़े हुए हैं ना मेटीरियल चीज चीजों में और मेरा तेरा ये सब ईगो है ना जो बोलते हैं ना फॉल्स ईगो ये अपना ईगो ही है कि मेरे को किसी के सामने झुकने का नहीं है लेकिन झुकने का सामने नहीं झुकना चाहिए yes, मतलब yes. सामने वाला मेरे को वो पोजीशन पे रखे लेकिन मेरे को वो सामने वाले को वो पोजीशन नहीं रखना हाँ, है बिल्कुल बिल्कुल वेरी ट्रू वेरी ट्रू इट इज आर ईगो ओनली दैट्स व्हेन लाइक यू नो दिस दिस चैंटिंग विल हेल्प अस एट लीस्ट फॉरगेट दिस थिंग एंड कंसंट्रेट ऑन द राइट पाथ यस और कई बार कैसे कई बार ही हम कैसे सोचते हैं ना मन में कि हमको सब सब ज्ञान है कभी कभी खुशी होती है अंदर में हाँ 
कि हम जानते हैं असली शरीर का महत्व आत्मा का महत्व पर लेकिन फिर उसको अप्लाई नहीं करते बिल्कुल अगर आप अगर आप अप्लाई कर रहे थे तो वी वुड बी लिबरेटेड राइट लेकिन फिर भी हमको थोड़ी सी क्षणिक खुशी तो होती है ना क्षणिक आनंद होती है जैसे ये क्लास होती है अच्छी अच्छी बातें सुनते हैं तो उससे फिलहाल हमको बहुत खुशी होती है कि अरे ये भी ऐसा भी है ऐसा भी है अरे ये तो मुझे मालूम नहीं था अरे ये लेकिन फिर 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 कुछ उसका अंजाम नहीं होता हाँ वी नो लाइक अभी इतने मिलियंस ऑफ मिलियंस ऑफ बर्थ से अभी कुछ हम किया नहीं अभी आके कुछ कुछ कोशिश कर रहे हैं कुछ जानने की तो हम बहुत न्यू है ईगो ईगो वी नो लाइक दिस इज ईगो बट हम छोड़ने को तैयार नहीं है इस ईगो को नहीं और हमको पता भी नहीं चलता ना कि ये ईगो है कई बार ही है ना शिल्पा हम बिहेव करते हम अपने बिहेव को समझ नहीं पाते राइट राइट और वो ही बहुत बड़ा डेंजर है मुझे भी लगता है बहुत बहुत टाइम पे कि हम खुद नहीं समझ रहा समझ पा रहे कि हम किधर रॉन्ग जा रहे उसका मेन कारण यही है शिल्पा कि हम समाज में हैं और हमको पूरा समय वहां व्यवहार करना पड़ता है तो हम मिसलीड हो जाते हैं बोलेंगे ये मेरी मेरी सहेली है ये मेरी पक्की सहेली है ये मेरी ऐसी है इसने ऐसा किया यानी कि हम लोग को ये बातें है ना उलझा देती है सही है सही है इसीलिए हमें ध्यान से जप करना है हाँ बहुत जप कर रहे हैं ध्यान पूर्वक जप करना है तो फिर इस बातों से हम छूट पाएंगे हाँ सही बात बोले Hmm. Yeah. तो फिर वापस hmm. वो इम्पोर्टेंस आ जाता है कि इतना इम्पोर्टेंट है जॉब करना हाँ सही और जितना हम जॉब करेंगे उतना खुद फिर हम समझ पाएंगे कि हम किधर रॉन्ग जा रहे हैं फिर उतना फिर उसी हिसाब से हम अपना ईगो को छोड़ पाएंगे hmm. Hmm. छोड़ जब जब हम पूजा करते हैं ना वेन एवर वी डू चैंटिंग और वी डू सम पूजा रिचुअल्स तो उस समय दैट टाइम अवर मतलब लगता है कि नहीं सब कुछ ऐसा है वैसा है लेकिन उसके बाद इमीडिएटली आफ्टर वन आवर और टू आवर हम लोग शुरू कर देते हैं एनालाइज करना हो ये गलत ये सही इसने ऐसे किया इसने मुझे ऐसे हट किया मतलब वो इमिडिएटली चेंज होता है हमारे अंदर इमिडिएटली तो फिर हमें फिर ऑल्सो कल्टिवेट भी करना है हमें फिर ऑल्सो इंट्रोस्पेक्ट करना है कि मैं क्या सोच रही हूँ और क्यों सोच रही हूँ और मेरा इंटेंशन क्या है तो वहाँ पे ईगो आ जाता है ना हाँ तो मगर हमें वो इंटेंशन हमारा खुद का इंटेंशन क्या है वो देखना होगा क्योंकि वो तो हमें कल्टिवेट करना है वो वो हमारा होमवर्क है जो करना है कि मैं ये मेरा माइंड है मैं ऐसा सोच रही हूँ क्यों सोच रही हूँ वॉट इज इट दैट आई एम थिंकिंग अबाउट Hmm. What is it that I want? So, because then how can we become Krishna conscious if we are not self-conscious? Yes, yes, very true. Hmm. Shinga Maharaj always says, you know, you have to be self-conscious before you can go Krishna conscious. It goes hand in hand. So we have to try and introspect. Okay, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? And what is behind it? Hmm. Actually, and you see, if we stuck, if we, it's true, we get very ego, you know, it's true. But then we have to also at come to a point. If we are gonna continue with this, then in the next life we are gonna continue in the same place. Ah, then how right. did we progress? Then how did we progress? We are in the same place. That means, hmm. you know, if we didn't progress, then what's the use? But then I know it's not gonna be at one time, but at least one tiny. at them at a time you know one tiny step at a time if we can progress otherwise then again in the next life we are going to be at the same place 
but at least if we progress one tiny bit, one tiny bit, it will help us. Each tiny bit helps. Or as a bihana, as a bihana, ye ego itna sushma hai, itna sushma hai, ki hamusko pakari ni sate, ham ham really sikar, ki ham ham ankari hai, ya ego stick hai, ham ye massive or as a hot. कि हम अगले That's का right. सामने वाले के ईगो को समझ सकते हैं yeah. ये बहुत प्रॉब्लम है ये ऐसा है ये ऐसा है पर अपने आप को नहीं समझ सकते इजीली क्योंकि That's हमको right. लगता है कि वी आर राइट वी वी आर राइट हमेशा यही सोचते हैं वी आर राइट क्योंकि हम आई एम राइट नॉट वी आर आई एम राइट सो व्हाई आई एम गोइंग टू जस्ट Sorry. Because we we know our ego will be hurt if we admit, oh, there's something wrong with me. I have to work on something. Then that takes work, right? It means I have to do something now. And then we don't want to do. So it's easier to speak for others. But usually what happens is when we are able to see some fault in others, many times that fault is in us. Mm. So if we are able to see some fault, then we can try to see, hmm, okay, I can see this fault. Now let me see if this fault is in me also. Mm. You know, and many times we may be able to actually see it if we can try hard enough. Mm. Yeah. Main hai na ki log jo karte hai na, gossip, we can call gossip or something like transfer of one thing from one place to another place or uh, even you are doing yeah. chanting but wo kahin na kahin impact karta hai. it impacts yeah so then you can avoid the gossip you don't have to listen to gossip you don't have to listen you don't have to indulge in it you know you can either change the topic, you can go away, you can, you know. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah, I want to ask you one thing. Like, see, suppose, like you're saying, stay away from the gossip and all. That's correct. Like, we all would want to do that. But kabhi aisa hota hai na, ke like, koi aise bol ra hai, ya aisa situation hai, so if we stop like you know, if you are like very quiet, you don't want to interact, you don't want to socialize, then people feel that you are very arrogant. How do you explain it to yourself? But see, if we are going to consider so much about other people, then how will we be able to move ahead? We have to understand what we are doing. So then it is okay, right? Just to like ignore the situation and just like be quiet and just watch the tamasha. Yeah, because see our yeah. intention is always our intention. What is our intention? That is very intention, important. Intention is like I don't want to be a part like, you know, of all this nonsense and just stay away from all this. Like, you know, forget it. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. But just to yeah. make... So, yeah. And, and then, so for some time people may say, okay, it's arrogance, but after some time, people may realize, oh, actually it is a sign of intelligence. No, 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 or, no. Then, or or maybe because, they may not is, even because you know, I've heard this saying, silence is the best weapon, but sometimes yeah. that, it actually backfires on you also. Yes, yes, very true. <laughs> yeah. No, like, I'm telling you, like, this is like my personal experience, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, unknow unknowingly, they will involve you in that thing, unknowingly, yeah. when you are trying yeah, yeah, to yeah, apart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very clear. Yeah. And then you'll have to, you know, you'll have to learn to be tactful to understand, okay, now something's coming up. Should I change the topic? Or should I, like, you know, can I excuse myself politely, nicely, you know, without hurting anyone else? Okay. Because we don't want to hurt anyone. Um, so it, it will take some kind of experience. It takes time. You know, that what what do you want to do? Is it is it that do I still want to meet so much with such a person that they are able to tell me all these things? Do I yeah. actually want to get, you know, so there are different techniques. You might have to see what works good for you or there may be different techniques to apply in different situations. That how you can politely excuse yourself from this conversation. 
Thank you, Hare Krishna. Because not not in an arrogant way, but in really in a in a in a way in in a very good intention way that yeah you know like I'm sorry I you know in that way with humility with humility you know if you can yeah. change the topic like you you might need you might you know learn to see some signals okay something might be coming up let me. Let me not get into it. So it takes a bit of like thinking kind of. Yeah. And then yeah. you may, some people may not want to be friends with you any then. But then you'll have to consider in what way do I want this friendship? Maybe you can take it to another level, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where is this friendship taking you and how do you want this friendship to evolve? Yeah. Is that okay? I hope that helps. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare 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 Krishna